Hello, in this video I will go over all of the common features of the system. First, I will host an interactive meeting. This is the standard meeting type that will allow other people to join and view my screen. Other meeting types share most of the common features explained here. The first thing you want to notice is the pause button. Right now, I am sharing my screen, so whoever joins this meeting will be able to see what's on my screen in real time. If I click pause, they will no longer be able to do so until I unpause it by clicking it again. Right below the pause button is a drop down menu which you use to control what users see. By default, it is set to the primary monitor, but you can change it to a specific region, application, different monitor, or an entire desktop showing all monitors. The next three major features are the other three buttons at the top. They are pretty self explanatory. Give control gives control to a viewer, allowing him to control your computer using his mouse and keyboard. Change Presenter allows you to request someone else to become the presenter, so everyone else can see what's on the screen. Lastly, Start Webcam starts your webcam. Down here you can see who has joined your meeting. There are two tabs. The first lists everyone who has joined via computer, tablet, or smartphone app. Right now, we see that's just me and John Doe who has joined this meeting. If a meeting participant does not use his computer, he can dial in using a telephone. The second tab shows those callers. If you click any attendee name, it will display a list of options for the attendee. From there, you can force an attendee to use a specific audio type, send file, remove him from the meeting, and make him a panelist. The panelist role is useful when you have a big meeting, because the panelist can communicate with any attendee and also has a private chat room with the meeting host and the current presenter. Right below all of this is the audio control section. Here you control how you want the system to pick up your audio. You can choose mic and speaker, telephone, and push to talk. In the mic and speaker mode, your computer mic will pick up your voice and speakers will output what others are saying. If you click setup, you can select what speaker and audio device you want the system to use and also what volume you want. The system employs echo cancellation for the mic and speaker mode. However, we still recommend you use a headset whenever possible to ensure the best audio quality. In the telephone mode, you call into the phone number displayed here and enter in the access code. If you click the call button, you will see a list of telephone numbers for different countries. You want to call the number of the country you are in. Lastly, push to talk is the same as using mic and speaker, except you have to hold down this button before you can start speaking. This audio mode is used to avoid echo, especially when there are many attendees. Over here is the annotation feature. Clicking it opens the annotation toolbar, which allows you to draw your screen by clicking and holding down the left mouse button. There are a variety of tools such as the pen, line, marker, and eraser which you can test out. Underneath the dot 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 button icon on the right is a drop down menu where you can allow others to annotate your screen, save your annotation, or erase it. If you allow all attendees to draw, everyone can start drawing. Right next to the annotation button is the record button. If you click this button, the system will automatically start recording your meeting. You can pause the recording to not record anything you don't want and clicking stop will generate a recording file, which gets automatically saved to your desktop or on your local or network directory defined in the recording setting. You can view the recording by double clicking the recording file. You can convert the recording into MP4 format by using the tool in the description link below. At the bottom of the panel is a chat box. You can choose who you send your messages to by clicking here and selecting your party. You can also push out an URL to everyone by clicking here and putting in a URL. Doing so will open the website on everyone's device. On the bottom left is the invite button. Click this to get the instructions you sign out to attendees so that they can join your meeting. You can either copy instructions to your clipboard or email them directly. Check the invite panelists if the attendees are panelists. Remember, you can assign the attendee to become a panelist during a meeting. You might have noticed the meeting bar at the top of the screen. If you hover your mouse over it, it will pull down the quick access menu that allows you to do everything you could from your panel. You can drag it around and move it from the top to the bottom by clicking here. The meeting control banner gives you quick access to all functions the system provides. Now let's go over the tools menu located in the upper left corner of the panel. Most of these features are self-explanatory, but I do want to go over some. First, file transfer. You can transfer files to people by clicking send files, selecting which files and directories you want to send, who you want to send it to, and clicking send. Poll allows you the presenter to ask all of your attendees to vote for answers to your questions. To begin, click New Question and set the answers. 
you can create the polling question before a meeting starts. Then click Start Polling. Every attendee will see the questions and be required to answer it. Close the poll and you'll see the final results. You can save the polling results. Start sharing my computer sound with attendees allows you to stream your computer audio to all attendees together with the video shown on your desktop. Stop new attendees from joining locks your meeting from accepting any new attendees. It is a protection to your meetings. The last feature I want to cover is Preferences. By clicking Preferences, you can set a variety of useful options. Under the General tab, you can set whether or not attendees can see your meeting panel. By default, this box is unchecked, so people can't see the meeting panel on your screen when you're presenting, thus hiding private chat messages and the attendee list. If you check Install Remote Printer, you will enable the Remote Printing function. Now when you print a document on your local desktop, you'll have an option of printing the document to the system's printing driver. This is useful when you're doing remote access and you need to print a document to your own local computer. The other feature here is attendees can view attendee list. If this box is unchecked, attendees can't see who else is in the meeting. They can only see you, the presenter, and the meeting panelists. Under the desktop sharing tab, you can set your speed type, turbo, fast, and slow. Default speed is defined by an administrator of your meeting server. With the turbo speed, you can stream your desktop video to your attendees with less than a half second delay. The system will automatically adjust the speed if your bandwidth cannot meet the requirement. Under the view type, you can force all attendees to see your desktop in full screen. Under the audio tab, you can set your conference call information. If you don't want to use the included free audio conferencing system, you can input your own call number and access code here. Then the system will include them in email invites and show them on the meeting panels. Video settings control your webcam settings. You can control who can see and who can be viewed. For example, the host mode allows only the host to see every attendee's webcam and attendees can only see the host webcam. This is natural for an online classroom where the host is the teacher. It will also save bandwidth dramatically. When a meeting is held in a conference room with multiple TVs, check the telepresence option. The system will display desktop and attendee webcams in different TVs and make the meeting most productive. Under the recording tab, you can set settings for how meeting recordings are made. You can enable auto recording and define the recording file path, which can point to a network storage device. And live streaming is for stream settings. Thanks for watching.